Noon is such a unique sound in the Holy Quran. Like any other sound, Noon has variations with short vowels. These ones are harmless and you should pronounce them like any other letter. For example, قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرُ كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحُ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ as you can see, the noon is pronounced very normally without any problems because there is a short vowel on top of it. But when noon has sukun, which is this sign on top, or no sign at all, it will look like that. And when this happens, you will do one of five things. But before we get started, remember, this is not the only noon there is in Arabic. Don't forget about those two. Those are called tenween, which literally means adding noon to the end of the word. Check this lesson here for much deeper information and to learn more about the tanween and its functions. There are five consequences to having noon sakina in the Holy Quran. Ghunna, Iqlab, Idhar, Idgham, Ikhfa. And we're going to start with Ghunna. Ghunna refers to the nasal sound produced through air streaming through nasal cavity. In Quran, it means extending the nasal sound for two harakat. That's about one second. And it happens when noon has shadda on top of it. Or, in other words, noon sakina plus another noon that has a short vowel on top or under. For example, وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمْ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ and the ultimate example is found in this ayat. Ghunna also applies to meme with shadda, since it is also a nasal sound, like in these examples. Also, Surat at takathur offers a very good training for Ghunna with its both types. As you can see, there is Meem with Shadda, so you give it two Harakat, and Noon with Shadda, so you give it two Harakat, and this is the Ghunna. Second is Iqlab. An Iqlab is something we discussed in the Quranic symbol lesson which you can find here in this link. And it is distinguished with the meme symbol on top of the word. Iqlab means change. And when ba follows noon sakina, you should assimilate them into meme with two harakat, like these examples. فَلِمَ تَقْتُلُونَ أَنْبِيَاءَ اللَّهِ اتَّخَذْتُمُ الْعِجِلَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ so as you can see, it is not necessarily within the same word, it could also be between two words. Notice, if there is any movement or a short vowel on top of the noon or under, then nothing special is going to happen, like these examples. So we pronounce the noon and the ba separately, normally, like any other letter. Next is idhar, which literally means showing. And it means you'll normally pronounce the noon if it came after one of the throat sounds. Since noon is pronounced here in the mouth, merging it with sounds coming from the throat is not possible because of the distance between the places where they're coming from in your mouth. And these are the throat sounds. Let's have a look at some examples. In هذا إلا أساطير تولوا قوما غضب الله فصل لربك وانحر أتعجبين من أمر الله 
So we pronounce the noon normally, without harakat or anything, just like a normal letter. Pay attention to the difference between these two examples because it is one of the most common mistakes. These two ayahs are of course very similar, but in the first one it is in and it is a noon with shadda, so you need to extend it to harakat for the ghunna. But the second example, it is a noon followed by a throat sound, and that is ha. So you will pronounce it normally like any other letter, and there was no harakat involved. So, in hadha versus in hadha. So remember to distinguish between these two. Now, idgham. It is the opposite of idhar. Because here noon will be merging or assimilating with sounds coming after them. These sounds form the word yarmalun. So there are five letters. Ya, ra, mim, lam, waw, and noon. And as you can see, they come from a much closer place where you pronounce the noon. So merging is very possible. Idram also involves two harakat. Like in this example. عَلَى هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ So, we have two places here for idgham. The first one with the tanween of huda. So, we say hudam not hudan min. We don't do that. The second position is between the men and rabbihim. And we merge them together and we say مِّن رَبِّهِمْ not min rabbihim, but we say mir rabbihim. The second example, aw min wara'i judur. So here we fused or merged between min, so the noon in min, and the waw, and it will be min wara'i. So we fused them together. Next example, so here it is the tanween of wail and it was merged with the ya in yawma id. So it would be Ikhfa means hiding. Remember, we say hiding, not merging or removing. In other words, the noon will be eclipsed or colored by the sound that follows it. To understand what that means, we'll take a look at the things you need to do to pronounce a proper noon. First, you need to let air through your nose or the nasal cavity. Second, your tongue or the tip of the tongue should be pressing against the alveolar ridge or the upper front teeth. And to perform the ikhfa, you'll need to keep the first but remove the second one and replace it with the shape that your mouth will take for the following sound. This whole process should take two harakat. Let's take a look at this word first before we look at the examples. To pronounce this word, your mouth should be getting ready to pronounce the seen while you're letting air through your nose and letting this nasal trait dominate the sound for two harakat. So it will sound like this. Al insan. So when I'm saying al insan. This is my mouth looking like the scene, as if I'm saying the scene, but I'm letting air through my nose while I'm doing that. So it will sound like this. Al insan. Another example. Same story. Your mouth is getting ready for the calf, but, but letting the sound resonate in your nasal cavity. So it will sound like this. Man kafar. Man kafar. So which sounds cause this? Well, any sound that doesn't belong to the throat sounds or the yarmalun merging sounds is an idhar sound. These are 15 sounds. And in the Quran, ikhfa sounds like this. So my mouth is taking the shape of Ta while I'm letting air through my nasal cavity to make it sound like this. 
antum. Another example. Inni khaliqum basharam min Again, my mouth is looking like I'm saying the ta sound, but I'm letting the air through the nasal cavity. Next example. Miduni. Last example. Wa ila thamuda akhahum salihan qal. Don't forget to extend this process for to harakat. So, in a nutshell, noon sakina is either noon sakina plus another noon that has a vowel on top of it, and this will give you a shadda, noon with shadda, and a ghunna for to harakat. And if you add noon sakina to ba, it will give you meem with also to harakat. And if you add noon sakina to any of the throat sounds, nothing happens. You'll pronounce noon normally. If you add noon sakina to any of the yarmaloon sounds, you will merge it and it will take to harakat. And last, if you add noon sakina to any of the ikhfa sounds, the 15 sounds, you will hide the noon by shaping for the next sound while keeping the nasal sound. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you've seen or you learned something new, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.